Yeah, I'm sorry, the, the argument I guess is, 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 as Alistair said, as, as Peter said earlier on, there is this sort of thing that community planning is made up of communities not planning. And for someone who had worked in regeneration for the last part of my life, I always wondered why planning profession, my profession, hadn't been engaging with community planning. Because it's, it's, it's the, 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 the buzzword, the buzz thing for everyone else in the public sector. And I was really quite concerned about this. Um, and we did ask the question at the start, is there a disconnect between spatial planning and community planning? And that's what the research we have to try and work out that that disconnect was there. Um, so we wanted to do that. We also wanted to see from the, the work, if that disconnect was there, was there an appetite to reconnect and to make that connection? Um, so what we've done, it takes a lot, the first phase is to look at that sort of stuff, and that's what we talk about that. And then what we, we we then came to the conclusion, as Nicola explained, that we needed to dig a bit deeper. And I'll talk a bit about some of the practical tools, um, the practical steps, some of the hooks which we think could be used. There are spatial planning tools in many ways, which can help link us into the community planning and the site as well. It's by no means a finished article. We are going to launch what we're calling what, the route map, which sounds really, really grand. It's a diagram of some of that. Um, but it, it's not by no means a very example. It's very much about um, trying to just get some ideas and some thinking going about some things we can do. Their hope is that it's become something which people want to live, which people add into, which think about and expand upon as well. So uh, I'd like to have a good time and a bit of discussion about that. So we actually do that. There are, uh, we, we did some work with three specific local authorities, including planning partnerships. There are reps from each of those authorities here. Some are more engaged than others in that. Uh, and there might be an opportunity maybe for them to into that process as well. But I'll leave you in safe hands for the next one. Um, I'll go through the first phase of research. We started this off in around about September last year. We brought an intern on board um, to help us with the research and worked with our Scottish State Committee and a lot of you in the room have fed into that, so thank you very much for that. Um, starting with a bit, a bit of background, as Craig mentioned, we've been thinking about this for a while. A lot of people have told us it's a bit of a disconnect, so we we wanted to have a have a look into the situation, and um, one of the first things was to understand what community planning is. And I have to admit, I've worked in community planning. I've done had any links of community planning as a, a previously a consultant um, at all. So one of the first things was to actually look at what it is. And um, speaking to a lot of people about this over the last few months, um, a lot of planners don't know what community planning is. Um, that's not a criticism, um, I was saying it's just a fact. Um, so the Scottish Government um, defines community planning as the process which helps public agencies to work together with the community to plan and deliver better services which will make a real difference to people's lives. Which, um, when you read that, it sounds great and it sounds like something we should be engaging with. Um, one of the things that was uh, key in our minds was the increasing outcomes focused agenda that we've got in Scotland and that the Scottish Government promotes. Um, and as we've been looking at it, the community planning sits really well within that outcomes agenda. So if you have the Scottish Government national purpose at the top of sustainable economic growth, and then you've got the 16 national outcomes, then they're distilled into the priorities for the single outcome agreements, and then the community plan sits below that. It's quite a clear um, clear hierarchy of those outcomes and very much focused on outcomes and spatial planning kind of sits over here I'm not sure how how it directly connects um, in with that um, and planning reforms obviously been bringing in a much more outcomes focused agenda so we thought maybe there's actually an opportunity to look at better, better connecting these um, we've obviously had planning for a long time and community planning has only been a thing since 2003 as a kind of statutory function. So actually maybe there's, there's an opportunity to look at how we, how we join them together a bit. And then one of the interesting things we were looking at at the very beginning was um, the, the latest round of guidance from the Scottish Government um, in 2013 guidance on community plan, oh, on single outcome agreements, sorry, was it brought in an, an introduction of um, the single outcome agreements have to have a clear understanding of place, which is a bit of a, a step change for single outcome agreements. And that's um, quite a significant hook for, for planning to, to build on, because we're obviously the place profession and uh, and have an understanding of place and think spatially. Um, 
the more we've looked at this though, it does seem that community planning and spatial planning are trying to do the same thing. We're trying to make places better for the people that live in them, um, but changing outcomes about, about bettering um, places and about reducing inequalities. So there is a bit of a disconnect. We might not be working as well together um, as we could be. So what we decided to do was to do some research, and um, a lot of you are in the room have been involved with uh, either as part of our interviews or in the round table discussion or responding to survey monkeys. So thanks for all of that. You and your colleagues have, have really helped um, us to better understand the position that we're in in Scotland. Um, it's one of the things we wanted to look at what the potential might be to better link spatial and community planning. Um, also looking at the perceptions that are currently out there about the two, um, and also barriers and opportunities to better linking. Um, we also then kind of have gone on to look at uh, ten, set out 10 recommendations in our report um, on maybe actions or questions that, that would help us to get to there. So we had some interviews and some meetings, not just planners but also community planners. Um, we involved a lot of other, we involved PAS and the Scottish Government and um, the Improvement Service and a lot, a lot of other COSMA, so a lot of other people that are interested in, in communities and in place. Um, once, we'd, once we'd gathered some information, we had a roundtable discussion in our office, which was really useful. I brought a lot of people together to actually try and test some of these ideas we'd come out with um, and start to kind of hone down our, our thinking. Because um, we obviously had our initial assumptions, um, but we wanted to make sure we were evidencing um, those to kind of support the theory. Um, one of the first things that did come out was that actually people thought it was a good idea that we were looking at this. So it's quite a good, good place to start was that people thought it wasn't completely waste of time, the entire research project and us bringing it internal. Um, everyone we spoke to thought we should be looking to, to better link the two processes. And we had a very short, very quick um, poll on the RTPI website that just asked, do you think it's a good idea? Should we better link community and spatial planning? And I think it was 89% of people clicked yes. You can either click yes no or don't know. So 89% um, of people said yes, which is a positive start. So it's actually, there's a, seems to be an appetite to start to think about this. And actually over the last few months while we've been doing this research, it's become really apparent that a lot of people um, are thinking about this now, and it's coming to the forefront. Things like we invited, we mentioned we were invited last week um, to Belfast to talk about it. They're thinking about it in Northern Ireland. Um, we invited here, so his planning, thinking about it. Scottish Government Community Planning um, are having a conference in a couple of weeks' time where they've invited us and Paz and some others along to actually talk about how we can how we can start to do this. So really positive, positive start. Um, we asked people what were the opportunities to better link community and spatial planning and um, the main one that came out was about delivering outcomes um, for people um, and there was a lot of stuff in there about sharing things, about sharing our visions, our processes, our resources and our knowledge. Um, but there were also quite a number of barriers, understandably, and they came out quite, quite strongly. Um, Obviously, continuing the severity, reducing the resources <coughs> came out time and time again from people. Um, and actually, your point earlier about you know, we've got to we've got to do our statutory function, and that's what we are there for. That's what we have jobs to do. That came out a lot from from people um, in both community and spatial planning. We've, we've got a statutory function to deliver. We're really tightly pushed to try and deliver that, and we've got continued pressure to increase performance and increase the speed of delivery. Where do we have the time to sit around and have a chat about about better linking processes? Um, and some of the recommendations to try, to try and think how we might be able to do that. Um, but maybe some of the the opportunities in actually sharing resources overcome some of the barriers. Um, stuff about that we've talked about this morning. Um, about talking to people, about partnership working, um, um, and the lack of consistency across Scotland um, came out came out as well. So what we did was we we've come up with um, ten recommendations. I'll just run through them. We'll not spend too much time on them, but um, just wanted to go through each one in turn. Um, and apologies for anyone who's been at the chapter meetings. So few of you in the room have heard the same the same. 
same 10 recommendations we talked about before, so try not to spend too long on them. And then Craig will go on to talk about the, the second phase um, that we're just finishing up just now. So uh, this report is on the Scotland pages of the RCPI website. If you want me to email your copy, just give me a shout and I can send you that one. Um, and the report just goes through our research and tries to bring out some of the nuances of things that we, that we, uh, we found and also sets out the recommendations. Um, also the last edition of Scottish Planner, which I'm sure you've read, cover to cover and sits proudly to your desk. Um, that mentions some of these recommendations as well. So the first one is that there needs to be a recognition of the starting points to making better links between community and spatial planning. Um, community plan is all about outcomes for people and it, it's often focused on reducing inequalities. And actually this could be somewhere that planning can fit in quite well and we've talked this morning quite a lot about um, <coughs> about embedding planning and Colin mentioned something about embedding planning in thematic partnerships and I think that fits in quite well with, with number one here. Um, health and wellbeing outcomes and planning for an aging population or regeneration, they're all areas that could be a bit of an inroad for planning to, to, to sell itself to community plan to understand um, how it can play a role and how the two could work together and um, have maybe a bit of a more joined up approach. And there's like, some really good examples of how this is working quite well already across Scotland and we talked quite a lot to Etif Curry who works in Glasgow City Council um, about the Equally Well project in Glasgow which was started by her team in, in planning but is now involving very much so community planning that's all about um, reducing inequalities and better health outcomes for people. Um, which is ideal. There are also opportunities to align processes to help to deliver spatial planning and community planning outcomes more effectively and more efficiently. Um, looking at visioning um, and engagement processes, we talked a bit about engaging um, this morning already, actually joining up these engagement processes and um, maybe reducing a bit of consultation fatigue and helping communities to understand um, why, why we're why we're um, engaging with them, why we're consulting, and what we're actually consulting on in, in a bit more of a round. Um, there's a bit of a, a lack of understanding about the roles and responsibilities of community planning by spatial planners and vice versa. Um, so maybe if we, we have a bit more of a collaborative approach, um, you know, we can express the expertise and the resources and the added value that we can bring as um, as spatial planners and that brings in quite number three spatial planning needs to articulate to community planning what it can do um, community planning is very broad it has a huge number of partners involved with lots of different aspects spatial planning is certainly one of them and really should be one of them but um, it's for us to kind of sell ourselves um, to community planning um, community planning is already very collaborative by nature so um, something that we can we can build into um, and it's not about us kind of as planners stamping our feet and saying well we're not being heard we don't have a seat at the table it's actually about us showing what we can do and the value we can bring um, and Colin mentioned that this morning when he talked about planner planning asserting itself into um, a space and, and that's that's where that comes into force um, number four about community planning partnerships understanding and recognizing the needs and the role for spatial planning to deliver what they're doing. Um, there are inconsistencies across Scotland on how community planning and spatial planning, um, like some places are, are doing it naturally and it's very much built into the corporate way that the councils run. In some places it's, it's, there's a desire to, for it to happen, but it's not quite happening yet. Um, so I think what we need is a bit of a consistent messaging across Scotland and that's certainly not a one-size-fits-all approach because obviously there needs to be local nuances but um, there needs to be some consistent messaging. There also needs to be more effective communication and that's something Colin and Alistair and Peter talked about. We need to talk, we need to be talking to each other and that involves our communities, that involves us um, as well. Um, it was seen as a significant barrier that a lack of communication between spatial and community planning <coughs> actors and that could be the partnerships or people working within local authorities or the communities themselves. Um, 
one thing that we find is that people are making the links. Um, there are some really good things going on at the local level, um, with better linking the two processes, but it's very much on uh, a person-to-person -person basis. Um, it's, it's where that local officer and that health professional or the, the local police officer have a really good link and they share things, they engage, but what happens if that person leaves? And you're left with no, no link. So maybe we need to look about um, links at different levels, whether it's um, at a strategic level, at a kind of more corporate level, as well as the local level. Um, there's also a need on both sides to understand each other better about what, what we each do and how it works. So there's a bit of a training gap here um, to understand how we can contribute to each other's processes. Um, the last of plans for overlap and consistency, we've got a whole range of plans. They all serve a very specific purpose. There are um, you know, visions for place, setting out how a programme or a funding stream is to be implemented. Um, there might be opportunities to link some of these. Um, maybe it's not, it's not saying there should be just one single plan for every single thing. It would be quite, quite weighty. But maybe linking the visions, um, I know East Ayrshire, and Craig will talk about this a bit more later, East Ayrshire um, have the community plan as their sovereign plan, the kind of corporate plan for the authority. So the vision for every other plan in that authority is set out in the community plan and they share that same vision. And uh, Carl Dorjenko, we were talking to from East Ayrshire, was saying that a lot of his team, if you talk to them, if you ask them what they do, they wouldn't necessarily say they're a you know, development planner or they're a development management planner, they would say they are delivering the community plan, which is a complete step change for, for a lot of us and um, to think about it very differently. Um, and I think we talked about this morning um, earlier about what the community sees. People living in a community don't see these two very separate statutory functions of community planning over here and spatial planning over here. They see their place, how it works, how it works for them. Um, where their services are, how long it takes them to get to the doctor's surgery or to work. Um, they think of their place as a whole, and actually it's us as professionals that are separating them because there are two statutory functions. So maybe we need to think um, a bit more rounded about it. Uh, number eight is about leadership. and um, I, This was just mentioned just, just in the question and answer section there. Um, about the levels of leadership, and one of the things we found was that heads of planning um, across Scotland, or the vast majority of, of you are um, third tier, if not fourth tier, with a couple, one or two, a second tier within the authority. So you could have the, a huge drive as a head of planning to, to better like the two processes, but then there's another three tiers above you who maybe don't understand it or don't see it as a priority. So we need to work at different levels of leadership to really action this if we see it as something that really needs to happen. Um, and that means that we need um, chief execs and um, this corporate level of local authorities working with us in, in spatial planning and in community planning. Um, and that feeds into to all, of, all of the actions really about the kind of leadership role is really key. Um, number nine is about community-led approaches and how they contribute to the delivery of the community plan and the development plan outcomes. And a uh, special plan has got a really important role in engaging communities and establishing a vision for the area. And um, key to this is making the link between the future development of an area, which is mainly through the development plan, and the provision of services in, area, in an area, mainly through the community plan and how we work together. And the final one, um, as Craig mentioned at the beginning, we thought that what we've done through this um, research and through the report and the recommendations was really to ask quite a lot of questions and make a lot of suggestions and kind of throw a lot of things in the air. And actually what there really was is a need to drill down further on this, to, to look a bit more closely of, at different areas and how they work, and maybe to come up with an idea of, of this root plan how we can move through it and move towards um, better linkages. Bearing in mind that there's maybe not a massive appetite for a legislative change, so it's working with what we've got. Um, so it's also been really positive with our discussions with the Scottish Government that it's this really, really um, high priority.
priority for them. So Scottish Government have um, John and Fiona have given us um, some funding to, to look at this phase two and to actually take this forward. And we've worked with um, with David and a few other and other people on this. So I'll 